is ending, so time for our obligatory look back. Representative Cockroft, good to have you back. Good to be here. Representative Dunta, good to have you Thank today you. as well. All right, let's start with this topic. You ready for this one? The best of 2017. Now, well, we'll put him on the hot seat first. Let's do okay. It. <laughs> What do you think is the best thing that happened to Oklahoma citizens from their government in 2017? Well, um, that's a great question to ask. And uh, so oftentimes, I think this year, we've focused on the negative things. But taking a look at uh, positive things that have happened for Oklahomans, I think we took one of our best steps forward that we've had so far on criminal justice reform. Uh, looking forward to taking that next step forward next year. Um, there are other things that uh, you saw a bunch of bipartisan efforts on, things that dealt with food insecurities, uh, the issue of uh, Real ID, another bipartisan effort. I think one of the best things possibly that's come out is that you've had a lot of politicians this year that have taken a step forward in the direction of doing things that are for Oklahomans and not necessarily for national politics. And I think that's a good thing for us. Start with that. What's that spoonful of sugar that makes the medicine go down? Yeah. <laughs> so, Representative Cockroft, your best of 2017. I think 2017 uh, proved two thi one big thing. First of all, that uh, two political sides can be right at the same time, and that is we, uh, in the state of Oklahoma, we are in desperate need of revenue to provide core services for our, our, our agencies that provide services to o Oklahomans. As well as the other side of the political spectrum, the, the looking into uh, fraud, waste, and abuse in state government through things like the, the Special Investigative Committee that I'm the chair of. Um, important steps forward. Governor started the year saying we need $1.5 billion in tax increases. The House kind of took a little bit more systematic approach, and as, as a result, our economy is trending upward right now. All right, but you know we'd have to get around to this topic. If we're going to start with the best, well, we'll start with them. Representative <laughs> Cockcroft. The worst moments of 2017. Eight months in, spe in, in session. Uh, the legislature normally spends about four uh, four months out of the year in, in session, and this year we spent uh, a very long special session spinning our wheels, as well as during regular session as well. Listen, I, I'm tired of petty partisan politics. It's time for uh, the elected officials of the state of Oklahoma in the House and the Senate and the governor's office to come together to put forth a budget that's constitutional, that can uh, provide the core services that Oklahomans provide on. It's time we stop playing games and it's time we just simply do what's right for the state of Oklahoma. Petty partisan politics. That could be <laughs> Keith Getty's next book. <laughs> yeah, it could happen. All right. Alliteration aside, what do you think was the worst thing for 2017? I think it's easily two things. I think that um, last year's legislative session was easily one of the least transparent that we've had in a long time. And I think when you have uh, a lack of transparency in government that um, your citizens don't get the greatest product that they deserve. I, I think the other thing is that uh, the legislature passed an unconstitutional budget at the end of session, and that has set off a series um, uh, of events that have led us to being in two special sessions now, scraping and clawing, trying to put together uh, a balanced budget for the year of 2017. Here we are going into 2018, still don't have a balanced budget in 2017. Um, it's an anchor around all of our necks, and it needs to be fixed. All right, since you bring that topic up, let's talk about when will, and, and oh, this is, you can qualify this a lot, but it's going to be 2018 in a couple of days. When do you think we'll have a budget for 2017? Well, I would like to see us have a budget for 2017 uh, immediately, starting into the new year. Um, it would be a tragedy for us to start a regular special or a regular session in February and still not have a budget done for the year of 2017. I think it would set a terrible trend for us. Um, it really needs to happen in the month of January. We were razor close to uh, having a budget done back in November. You had 71 members of the House and 38 in the Senate that came together in a bipartisan approach to put real revenue uh, on the table, recurring revenue that will fund core service of government. We're that close. I think we can get it done in January if we work together. It is lost, on the, I think, in the media and the public that had it not been for State Question 640, this budget would have been done a long time ago, right, Representative Cockcroft? Oh, absolutely. So what do you do? It's st State Question 640 still there. Yes. So how close are we? Well, we're going to continue to work through the month of January. As Representative Dunnington said, it's extremely important that we put our state on a better path. Um, one thing that we're going to continue to focus on is making sure that we can provide the core services of state government that Oklahomans have, have come to expect and, and, and rely on. Uh, whatever happens in the next month before regular session begins, we cannot rush into it. One of the biggest problems about last special session was that there was no plan agreed upon, a bipartisan 
bipartisan plan agreed upon between all parties in the House and the Senate and the governor's office before we even started. As a result, we spun our wheels. We have to go in with a plan. Fools rush in. Okay, let's get to uh, crystal ball time, okay? We know what next year is. It's an election year, and you've still you got a special session coming up, and it's still in special session. And there's going to be this race with a lot of personalities. Look into your crystal ball and tell us what or who is going to be the driving factor in all the deliberations for at least the spring. The, the, the driving deliberation is going to be the state budget. Um, as goes the state budget, as goes the, the, legislatives, uh, the legislature's uh, ability to, to work together, so goes the elections. Um, and I think the people of Oklahoma are looking for one thing, and it's the common thing that I hear from my constituents, I know other members hear from their constituents, is fix the problem. Fix the problem, put the state on a better path, quit the bickering between the House and the Senate, Republicans versus Democrats, it is actually possible that we can come together and find a solution for all of Oklahoma. And so goes, as goes the legislature, so goes the elections this next, this next November. Yesterday, Dr. Gaddy said there's no way that the gubernatorial candidates can stay out of this very much longer. Do you agree? Do you agree with that? Oh, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, when 2018 starts, this is going to be about the elections in November. And we'll have a budget to work on and we'll have legislative priorities, but everyone will be looking at November and looking at the governor's race. I, for one, uh, as a member of the House Democratic Party, am excited about uh, our candidates on the Democratic side, candidates that are talking uh, about what's going to be best for Oklahoma and Oklahoma citizens. Um, that's what we're going to need here. We we're, we're, should be done with the national party politics. We should be done bending towards um, you know candidates that are just telling you what you want to hear and we should be looking at candidates that are bringing a positive message for how our state can get better I can't wait to, to get it. started yeah. can't wait to get started thank you to both of you happy new year for happy heaven's year. sake stay safe out there tonight we'll see you next year see this again at news9.com slash your vote counts